Hello and welcome back to The Crafty Cupboard. I'm Leanne and today we're exploring the prompt nest for my Field Notes journal as part of Roxy's Journal of Stitchery Challenge. The word nest holds such rich connotations, especially for us crafters. What does it mean to you? For me, notions of home, safety, comfort, a place where creativity and care come together. For us, it's much like our crafting spaces where we find joy and solace. I like to start by sketching out my pre preliminary concepts, the idea of a nest nestled in the branches of a tree and then a larger nest that conveys the emotion and sentiment of a nest. I was unhappy with how I was getting my branches to form, so I decided to head out into nature and investigate the Botanic Gardens of Sydney. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. You can walk along the coastline of the harbour and see stunning views of the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge. One of my favourite features as you walk along, they have Aboriginal words, the words of our first people engraved. And so you can learn language as you're walking along. Beautiful sculptures. And of course, incredible, incredible trees. Trees very large and old and spectacular. Lots of inspiration for how to draw the branches. And so what I did was I took a photo of a tree and I turned up the contrast on it on my iPad. So I put it into black and white and turned up that contrast to be very high so that you can easily see the light and shadows of the tree. And then I used this as my base drawing. You can see the dark and the light. So I actually just traced the outline of these branches onto my piece of fabric. Now, this is my original piece. And I'm using a piece of botanical dyed calico. Uh, so this was a piece I created in my flower pounding video a while ago now. Um, and my original concept was to use fabrics to stitch the branches. However, I abandoned that and in a later shot, you can see it in the background as to why I abandoned it, because it didn't convey the feelings and the sense that I wanted it to have of comfort and safety. Okay, so that's a water erasable pen, just outlining the branches. So when my original concept didn't go to plan, I got out my dad's colouring pencils, one of the favourite things that I inherited from my dad. Um, in his art collection and they're just a set of every Derwent colour pencil, normal colour pencils. I figure this is going into a journal. That's not a piece to be washed or ironed or anything like that and so I'm not concerned what will happen to the pe pencils. And uh, my idea is to have just the branches sort of light in the background and then to feature the nest a bit more. So with the pencils, it's easy to get shading. You know, it's something we're all familiar with doing, colouring in, isn't it? And I've just got a piece of sandpaper underneath to help grip the, paper, um, the calico so it doesn't move around too much as I'm colouring and it also helps for some of the colour to come off your pencil onto the fabric. Nests are fascinating in their construction and symbolism and I'll be stitching two separate versions in this piece. The first nest will be stitched directly in the tree using the spiderweb rose technique. 
So this method creates a lovely three-dimensional effect which is perfect for capturing the intricate structure of the nest and it demonstrates the position of the nest in situ. Once we've laid out the base stitches, we weave our main thread over and under each spoke as we work our way around many, many times until complete. Using the back of the needle to feed the thread over one spoke and then under the next one prevents the needle from accidentally piercing the fabric and ruining the look. I want more slow stitchy elements in this piece, so I fussy cut variegated green fabric into shapes representing leaves. When you look closely at where nests nestle, they're right in the tree, surrounded by the outer canopy of leaves, but there aren't many leaves in those inner dark branches. To convey this idea, and to play up the contrast between realistic drawing and representational stitching, my leaves are sparsely placed. I tack them into position with sew line glue pen and then draw some branches to anchor them. To get a nice highlight and sheen, I detail the leaves with some feather stitching. You can glimpse my first attempt at the tree, gloomy and discarded, in the top right of the screen. You know how they say, if first you don't succeed, try and try again. And that first tree certainly gave off more creepy, dark forest than home comforting nest vibes.
high time this nest received its precious cargo, some little beads to make the eggs. Next, I'll create a larger version of the nest, as if viewed through a magnifying glass. This nest will be stitched using a variety of threads, wools, string and fabric to highlight its complexity and beauty. I just love watching the birds gather the small twigs and pieces from my lawn that, that form their nests. Some of them you can watch and they'll swoop down a few times over, discarding the previously picked up stick for something that they've spotted that's even better and then off they fly. Now, while I'm stitching, let me share with you a little story. We have a hedge out the back between us and our neighbours, and it's quite a vigorous grower. And it had gotten very high and thick, and so we needed to trim it. And so we bought a, an electric hedging tool um, because my hand cutters were just no longer up to the task. It was taking too long. And so we spent a pleasant morning out there trimming away. It's quite a noisy tool, um, but, you know, very fast and efficient. Well, there would be the blackbird and the female would constantly dig up all our garden beds and putting dirt and mulch all over the pathways. And the father would sit on the fence between our houses and drive my poor neighbour crazy. <laughs> with its constant noise it would emit this high-pitched sort of chirp constantly over and over and over again and um, I was watching one day and I saw him fly into the hedge and so when he flew away I stuck my face in the hedge in that space where he'd entered and to my great surprise three little mouths popped up opened waiting to be fed and so uh, it was I was horrified to think that we'd hedged the, what the poor birds must have been through how terrifying that we'd hedged this uh, hedge and they were in there so um, it was a delightful surprise and I've been nervous to trim it ever since but um, they haven't reused that nest I don't know if they typically build a new nest every season anyway they're still there in our yard um, but have picked a different spot I think Now, as humans, we like to nest too, don't we? This is my favourite cosy nest. It's the smallest room in the entire house, 
but it's the one I feel happiest in. I feel nice and cosy and comfy and I like actually that I've got windows front and back and then I can see all the garden from within. Um, so that's my favourite little place to nest. Here I like to s retreat, to relax, stitch and dream. And uh, I've still got a handle on everything that's happening in the house and everyone has to walk past me. So I don't feel um, isolated from the family as I work here. So there we have it, a beautiful stitched representation of a nest capturing its detail and its essence. I hope this inspires you to reflect on the nests in your life and how they provide comfort and creativity. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to have you here all the time. If you hit the notification bell, you'll always be notified when I make a new video and, and you'll be able to see it. Consider sharing with a friend if you think they might enjoy it too. What does your favourite nest look like? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Until next time, keep stitching with joy and love and finding calm and beauty in every creation. Happy sewing, everyone.